Uh, we talked a lot about getting maximizing your uh, 8A certification, but the biggest thing around it is make sure people can find you. If they can't find you, they can't buy from you. So don't go anywhere else looking for any other magic uh, pill or solution. Just go to DSBS and make sure your um, profile is filled out complete in there. Um, okay, so I'm going to go through this really fast because these are 30 minute trainings and I've got 12 minutes left and a lot to share with you. But I just wanted to tell you overall, how does the buyer look for a company like yours? What's their process when they go to a tool like an agency portal or DSBS? In this case, I'm showing DSBS um, right here, your small business profile. But fundamentally, they come into this tool, right? They come into the supplier portal for the federal government. They perform a keyword search, um, just like SharePoint or cleaning services or cybersecurity, just like you would if you go to Google looking for something for your um, office, right? How can I find a, a copy repair person, a, a carpeting company, uh, electronics, whatever it is, you're going to Google and you're pretty much going to start your research there. And so you do a keyword search and when they get the results back, they're going to do this initial qualify. They're going to look at the results of all of these companies coming back in table format and they're looking to see if your narrative, and I'll talk about that in a second, if your capability narrative says that you do what they just searched for. We call that search intent. Their intent was to find a company that does cybersecurity. So they search for cybersecurity. And when the profile comes up, they want to see that your narrative basically says cybersecurity. If it says we do all things IT and then cybersecurity is one word, they're going to go, well, they're probably not a cybersecurity firm. They just touch on it. Compared to if you really are a cybersecurity firm, then your narrative will just be cyber because that's what you do. So they're doing this qualifying and I call it shortlisting, right? They've got a bunch of people and they're swiping left and right. And when they swipe left, you're off the list. And when you swipe right, you're on a short list. Same way we do with resumes when we're hiring candidates. We're left, right, left, right. We might go, do they have an MBA? Left, right, left, right to find things like that. That's what the buyer is doing because they're not trying to look at everybody. They're trying to get a, a, a good enough list, a short list that they can then choose um, vendors to do market research with. And then the last thing is they do company website, look at a lot more. I'm going to come back to that um, in a second in a whole different way when I describe the problem that is out there and the reason most 8A firms, and when I say most, I mean 80% are not maximizing the certification that you have. Uh, people like me think it's a golden ticket and it literally is, but there are some things you have to do to make sure that it's working for you. No one's going to hand you money, but you're on a, um, you kind of got a, a fast pass, if you will, at Disneyland for a roller coaster where you can go to the front of the line, right? Everybody still had to pay to get in line, but this is a fast pass, a golden ticket. But if you don't pay attention to what you need to do, then you're just going to stay in line. And that's currently what's happening with 80% of the small businesses. So let's talk about the 8A problem. Uh, and I say this softly, but the thing that needs to be fixed in a week or less. Okay, so there's a lot of reasons why a buyer might um, shortlist you or take you off the shortlist. There's subliminal uh, tickers, if you will, that they look at it and they go, ah, I don't, I don't want to bother. It's, it's too much work. We call that friction. You're introducing friction between you and the buyer. You want to get put on the shortlist. Don't do these things that introduce friction. And so the first one is um, saying on your small business profile, that you don't accept credit cards. Everybody accepts credit cards. No one says you have to sell to the government whatever they want, but everybody accepts credit cards. All you do is take the number, give it to your bank, and they take the money from the government. That easy. But it's just a checkbox. The problem with it is it's subliminally for 2,000 companies is saying we're not ready to be able to accept money from the government because we can't accept credit cards. But you probably can, right? So go in there, turn that checkbox to yes. The next one is... Um, out of the 6,000 8A firms that are out there, 3,000 of you are using less than 10 keywords. I told you that when the government is looking for a seller like you, they're going to use keywords primarily to find what they're looking for. And in the DSBS uh, small business profile, you have 25 keywords available to you. 3,000 firms, half of these 8A firms are not using all of the keywords. They're only using less than half. And so I want you to go in there and increase it. How can the government find you if, they, um, if they're searching, but you don't use keywords? So an example is cybersecurity. Maybe they go search for RMF, risk management framework. It's a type of cybersecurity thing. If you don't put RMF in, or if you don't put risk management framework in, but that's what they search on, they're not going to find you. When you use all these keywords, you have room to put cyber, risk management framework, RMF, 
right? So use all those keywords. 3,000 companies are not using the keywords. Next one is even worse. There's a narrative that I talk about that they look at this initial narrative. Not only is the narrative telling them, hey, this is what my company does, but it is also keywords, right? We call this field a keyword indexed field. So they index it, meaning every word in there, if they buyer searches for it, they'll find you. And so it's another place for you to put a whole bunch of keywords. But right now, 4,600 companies out of the 6,000 8A firms are using half or less of the narrative field. That means 50% more of your story could be told and they could be finding you, buyers could be finding you if you tell that story. Then there's another narrative field, right? It's called special equipments, but it's it's another narrative field and 6, 000, basically no one is using this, right? There's 6,300 firms and 6,200 are um, not using this field halfway or more, right? And when I, I'm being generous when I say it's half full because I would be willing to bet 5,000 are completely empty. Well, that's a huge chunk of space where you could be telling your story to the buyer when they're doing market research. That's a huge chunk of space where you could be putting, putting keywords in that the buyer could find you, right? You get more and more creative about how they might be searching for a company like yours and you get those keywords in there. You wanna weave it into a narrative, but you want those keywords in there. That way, if somebody types in, you know, cybersecurity or elevators, right? There's there's elevators and then there's lifts, I think is another way to call it. And there's all sorts of other terms. You could use manufacturers names around the elevators, right? There's all sorts of ways the buyer might try to search for you. You should learn what those are and maximize these three fields, keywords, the first narrative and the second narrative. Um, when you do, you will massively increase the chances that buyers find you when they go looking for you. Um, the last one, the next one is 75% of the companies out there have no past performance at all listed. What that means is the buyer shows up, they look at you and they go, oh, that looks good. And they go down to the bottom of the profile and there's no experience, but many of you have experience, whether it's federal as prime or sub, whether it's commercial or state and local, put it in. So when they come down, they go, okay, you say you do what I want you to do and you have experience doing it. I'm putting you on the short list, right? 75% have no experience. Um, and th the last one here is 5,700 have no secure website. It means HTTPS. You need to have a secure website. We've got CMMC going on. The government's really pushing this massive push on privacy. But if they come in and they see your website's not secure, they might not click on you. You might get swiped to the left and not put on the short list. And so what I like to say is if you're the best, but buyers can't find you, are you really the best, right? If you're experienced, but no one knows that you're experienced, are you really experienced? Not to the new market researcher, yes to your customers, but not to the new market researchers. Um, really quickly, because I, I see I'm just blowing through this time and I'm gonna come back and do a bigger training offline of the lives, but go to this website. Um, it's called GLS, General Login System. Here's the URL, you can get this later, but go in there. This is how you update your um, DSBS pages without having to go all the way through SAM, having your cage code renewed, all that. Um, and so you can get a GLS account to do that and ask for the supplemental pages. Update SAM and DSBS as needed, and then register in the agency portals. I would register in every federal agency portal uh, that's that we have. We got 12 right now, and we update it every month. Um, and then strategically in the large primes. So if you're going after the Department of Education, you want to find what large primes are in there, and then register in their portals. So hopefully that all made sense. This is such an important thing. You see those numbers. 75% of 8A firms are kind of invisible to the buyer. If you do this one thing, buyers will begin to find you. It doesn't mean they're gonna buy from you immediately, but now buyers can find you and be aware of you. They can see that you're experienced somewhere else. And, and I really want that for you.